Okay, so coming up this fall, we got some cool new portable gaming tech products coming out, right? Two, two in particular, the Valve Steam Deck and the Nintendo Switch with OLED display. And with some newer products coming out, I guess, I just want to do a video answering the question, where's the Nintendo Switch Lite going to sit in all of this, right? Will this product persist? Do we, should we expect a new Nintendo Switch? You know, no. What's going on? This is my video on why the Nintendo Switch Lite is going to be just fine. It's going to persist on. You should still buy one. Now, the number one reason I think that the Switch Lite isn't going anywhere is portability, right? This is Nintendo's console offering fully on the go. Now, the Nintendo Switch and OLED Switch are going to be that as well, but neither of them really is portability first focused, right? Those are pretty large products and, you know, they have larger screens and larger battery lives, but the Nintendo Switch Lite really starts to approach that smartphone form factor. It's not as small as a smartphone, it's not as portable as one, but if you were to get the Switch Lite, and especially with the little flip cover case Nintendo sells for like 39 bucks, this is an extremely portable Nintendo gaming experience. And on top of that, it's their full gaming experience, right? You can play pretty much every Switch game on the go with this much smaller device. And you can play them as intended, which is something that I think the Steam Deck is probably going to struggle with a little bit. Um, the Steam Deck is, it's got a 1200 by 800 display on it, so it's going to be doing 720p just like the Switch and, and Switch Lite. But a lot of games built for Steam, they're, they don't always play the best that they can at that resolution in a portable mode. Many of the Nintendo games come with portability in mind, so I think that is going to be something that really drives the, the Switch and Switch Lite kind of selling really well, and specifically the Switch Lite. I think, I think a lot of people really like just a portable gaming system. One thing that is super important to assessing the portability of a gaming system is, is thinking about like, well, how long is the battery life of this going to last? You have a 3570 milliamp hour battery life in the Switch Lite, a 4310 milliamp hour battery life in both the Switch and the OLED Switch. And that'll be kind of interesting because the OLED Switch has a larger display, but it's a different technology. We'll see how that shakes out. And the Steam Deck has a 40 watt hour battery life. They didn't list the milliamp hour battery life. So, pulled up a website, went to a converter, and I put in 40 watt hours, and I hit convert, and it turns out that's infinity milliamp hours. Now, more realistically, right, the, the Switch Lite is rated to have a three to seven hour battery life range. The Steam Deck is rated to have a two to eight hour battery life range. Now, three to seven, two to eight, two, they literally, the Steam Deck just kind of widens that range. It could go a little longer, it could go a little shorter. Why is that? Well, I think it's no, no joke that Steam's game selection is a much more mixed bag, right? Whereas everything that goes on to Nintendo Switch is going to be approved through the Nintendo Store. I think that you have a big, a much bigger variability in the game quality and the resources a game may or may not take up on the Steam Deck, considering it's all games meant for PCs. That can be anything from like Minesweeper all the way up to Cyberpunk 2077. And yes, you can bet your butt I will be trying to play Cyberpunk on, on my Steam Deck. Just to see. Now, actually, the best of all three of these is the Switch slash Switch OLED with a four and a half to nine hour battery range. Um, but I do think that any of these batteries are pretty solid. When you consider what it takes to, to play a game, um, the processing and graphics power, I think they all have pretty solid battery lives for what I would want on the go. When you contrast this to like smartphones and other things that, you know, you're measuring on the go battery with, uh, many smartphones come in around four to five hours of screen on time. Considering the Switch Lite is a $199 product, but is competing with the three to seven hour battery life, like three to seven hours of gaming on it, I'm incredibly impressed. And from my personal experience using the Switch Lite for a few months now, um, I do not think, I mean, I, I ne it never dies in the middle of me playing it. The only time I run out of battery is when like, I've left it for days or I've played it over multiple days and not decided to go and take the time to charge it during that time. Overall, I do think the Switch Lite is probably the best at being portable because that's all it's trying to do. It's not trying to also be on a, on a TV or on, a, on another display. The Switch Lite is targeting portability and therefore they're the best at that. 
The number two reason, durability. Now, I can't talk about how the Switch Lite compares directly to the Steam Deck or the OLED Nintendo Switch yet, because I don't have them here in my hands. But from everything I have seen and everything I know and spec sheets and my experience with the Nintendo Switch, the Switch Lite is far more durable than any of those other products for a couple of reasons. One, it's all one piece, right? There's no pieces of the Switch Lite like on the Switch where you're removing controllers and they have to have that kind of mechanical mechanism to one, lock the controllers in place and two, make sure they actually attach and, and are, are making the connection. It's one solid piece of plastic on the back. Now the front is a separated piece of plastic that you can separate with a coin or something like that if you want to take it apart, but it's all one big old chunk. Big chonky boy right here. So that alone already makes this a little bit more durable of a product. And I know what you might be thinking, right? Well, compare it to the Steam Deck, right? Where that's all one solid thing too. But because of the specs of the Steam Deck, right? The 16 gigs of RAM, the AMD APU, the, the fact that it's trying to play or it's going to be playing Steam games, that makes me feel that the internals of that are going to be a little more delicate. Right, the Switch Lite is kind of designed with portability in mind, always has been. Something tells me that you'll be able to drop this and have much less of a risk of damaging a critical or expensive component than, than you're going to be with the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck's trying to cram in what I believe is a bigger battery, pretty much an entire PC, and then on top of that, high quality controllers and uh, touch pads and other things that... You know, it, all of that in one just means there's more that can go wrong. This kind of went the simple route. It's durable. I would feel okay putting this in the hands of like a, a small child or a baby. That's, and I think they did that on purpose. The fact that it's designed to be used by children means that now me as an adult, I don't have to worry about it quite so much. Also, in the portable department, Nintendo has just a plethora of experience, right? Ever since the OG Game Boy, Nintendo has been coming up in here making chunky tanks that can be used on the go. And a big part of being on the go is being durable. The OG Game Boy still runs just fine because it's built like a tank, right? And then if you take that to its absolute end state, right? The, the perfect version of the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advanced SP, even with a moving part, even with the hinge moving back and forth, this bad boy still plays today. My Game Boy Advance SP from when I was a child. I have had this for 18 years. Many of you watching this video were not even born when I bought this product. And I've had it for that long. It still works. In my opinion, the Game Boy Advance SP was, was peak portable gaming, but totally different video about that. Now, even after they took the, the Game Boy to its its peak level, they, they brought out the Nintendo DS, which I also had the original DS and the DS Lite, and I had a 3DS, and, and all of those products, they, they were still extremely durable on the go. Nintendo has understood from Adam that you got to get the durability down. People don't want a product that feels like, if I drop this, it could break immediately, because oftentimes the people buying these products are people that either have a, a not much of an income or they don't have a job, right? They're, they're like a teenager or a kid who, you know, they got this as a gift and if it breaks, they don't get another one and they have no means to get a new one. And Nintendo doesn't want you to buy a bunch of Switch Lights. They want you to buy games that you use on them. But if your Switch Lite is broken, now you can't buy games on it. So them making a product that you saved up to buy that stays around in your life is actually important to them. They wanna make sure that that product doesn't break because if it does, you're not gonna keep buying $60 games because you physically can't. Now, when talking about durability, one of the, the, the final arguments I hear from, I hear a lot in the comments really is Joy-Con drift. How is the Joy-Con drift on, on the Switch Lite? I personally, after months of use, have not experienced Joy-Con drift. Um, and if you don't know what Joy-Con drift is, it's where your, your Joy-Con wears out a little bit. And so in the game, it's kind of constantly drifting you off to one side because, the, you know, the mechanism is a little bit worn out. Now, I've heard all accounts over the board in my comments section. Some of you guys have never experienced Joy-Con drift. One of you has played for a thousand hours and never experienced Joy-Con drift. One of you has played for 2,000 hours, which is like three hours a day 
But some of you got it in within two weeks of using it, experienced Joy-Con Drift. It sounds like the experience is pretty varied. I don't have any stats or numbers on this. I just have my experience with my viewers in the comments section. Now, the number one thing you guys have recommended to me, um, which I think is a great idea, uh, is get the Nintendo Switch Lite Flip Cover. To cover, you know, it, it covers your Joy-Cons when you're not using them. So if, if you are on the go, you're bringing this with you places. The biggest thing I'd worry about when I'm on the go is not when I'm playing this, but these little joysticks getting caught on bags and 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 things yeah no not good you don't want that the flip cover has these little indents on it that kind of accounts for the the joysticks so that they're not being constantly bent in a certain position while you're playing it too try and be a little lighter on the joysticks you don't have to be pushing super hard to one side you can you can be more gentle on those joysticks and and just try not get so sucked into the game that you're you're hurting your system. Now the overall joysticks and buttons, even though this isn't, I'm talking about durability right now, but I do think that the, the Steam Deck is gonna have a far better joystick and controller experience. It just looks like a more professional, big, meaty gaming controller. Um, that also, though, if you have smaller hands, the Steam Deck looks like it might not even work for you. You might not be able to physically reach everything. I, I'll have to wait till I get one in person. And the third reason I think that the Switch Lite is going to keep persisting on is a uh, value, straight value. And the first aspect of value, right, is price. This is $199, right? And you do what you want with your, oh, well, this spec doesn't, doesn't add up, blah, blah, blah. You can start playing Nintendo Switch Lite games starting at $199. Double that to get to the Steam Deck and almost double that to get to the OLED Switch. This targets a totally different market of people. The Nintendo Switch OLED and the Steam Deck will compete with each other. This is playing on a totally different level in an uncompeted field right now. If PlayStation had carried on with the PSP and, and pushed forward with that, maybe we'd have something. But this is the only dedicated gaming console that you can get for $199 or around that price range that has its own entire game ecosystem, an entire game store, a whole slew of accessories. There's a huge value in that. The fact that this doesn't cost more is the reason it, it doesn't compete with other products. At 199, this is appealing to both kids and adults alike. I, I this is my main Nintendo gaming console. I just don't really play on my TV when I'm playing Nintendo that often. I'll usually put a movie up or something and I'll be playing a game while the movie's on. Also, this is like your gateway drug into Nintendo. Once you get one of these and then you buy a bunch of games from the Nintendo store or you buy the game cartridges, then after you get addicted, then you'll want to go buy the, the OLED switch. And before you know it, now you've spent way more than you ever intended to. That's not about value. I'm just, yeah. Right now, because this is just so much less expensive, but you're still getting quite a great product out of it, I would consider this to compete for one of the best value gaming systems overall you can get right now. It doesn't really compete with the PlayStation or Xbox at all. Those are extremely good values in their own way, but I do think this may eat up a few people that would have considered getting a Steam Deck or getting an OLED Switch because it's just so much less expensive to get the same game options. And by the same, I mean the same as the Switch. The Steam Deck's gonna have a whole slew of games that aren't available on either of them. Overall, I know a lot of people have been wondering, like, should I wait? Is Nintendo gonna make an OLED Switch Lite? Is any of that? No, I don't think they are. My opinion is this is, this is probably exactly what we're gonna have for at least two years. I think the OLED Switch was their way to appetize people as they work on whatever the next console is, but I don't expect that for years. If you have a Switch Lite, rest easy knowing that this is a, a modern gen portable console and I think it's going to persist on. If you're considering getting a Switch Lite and, but are just hesitant because you're like, well, I don't want something new to come out right after I buy it. Now is a good time to buy a Switch Lite. I don't think anything's going to change with them. If you want to get one right now, you're not missing out on anything. The OLED Switch is right around the corner, but like I said, they don't even compete. The OLED Switch is $350. So yeah, that's it. Switch Lite, still awesome. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, thank you for coming and watching a video on my channel all the way through. If you uh, want to subscribe, I would definitely not, uh, not mind. If you're returning, thank you as always for coming back. 
and we bye bye